now that we're done with the framework about uh, the aggregate demand and aggregate supply and we were able to establish the price level and the real GDP, we're good to talk about the concept of inflation. Inflation is simply a general and sustained increase in price level. You know, whenever the prices of the whole country are rising, we call it uh, inflation. Now, there are two words that we want to talk about here. And one is general, which means overall, not for few goods, but all over the country. And secondly, sustained, which means continuous. So when prices are rising in a general, which means overall manner and in a continuous manner, we say that there is inflation taking place in a country. The prices are going up. Now, we will soon see that inflation is harmful for many countries and well, a key macroeconomic goal for many economies is to keep inflation as low as possible. But before we talk about that, I want to first talk about an important concept of real versus nominal measure. In times of inflation, we'll soon see that the nominal measures are sometimes higher than real measures. So let's talk about what is real versus nominal measurement. Well, nominal measurements are basically those measurements that are using prices that are current at the time of a transaction taking place versus real measurements will be when we are keeping prices constant a good way to look at it is through probably an example so let's do an example where we look at current measure versus nominal measure let's say last year you bought a good for two dollars so let's say the price was two dollar for a good and let's say there is inflation taking place this year and that inflation is 10 percent now that would mean now this year the price for the same good will be let's call it p dash will be 10 percent more which means 2.2 dollars now 2.2 dollar mean that your real consumption has not changed for this item you are still buying the same good but your spending has gone up now this basically means that at the current prices the the good is becoming expensive while in reality you are still buying the same good so if you were to use the value of your spending to measure change in consumption through time it would be misleading why because you are not spending more because you're buying more you're spending more simply because the prices have gone up so what we say actually is this that when prices are rising, the nominal measurements will always overstate the extent to which economic variable is growing through time. You know, you can look at this picture and you can say that things are becoming um, sort of you are probably buying more of a good, but in reality, things are becoming expensive. You're buying the same amount of goods and services. So real measurement will actually say that let's keep prices constant, figure out whether you're buying more or not. If I keep prices constant, which means I do not look at inflation, you are still buying the same quantity. Your quantity is probably one unit, right? But nominal measurement will tell you uh, that the, the value has gone up, but you may not be able to figure out whether this is because of the price going up or is it because the quantity is going up. So nominal measures can be misleading and as a result of being misleading, economists will be more interested in basically knowing the real values of goods and services rather than nominal values which actually change because the prices are changing. One way to do this is basically simply looking at the volume produced at uh, each uh, year or in each year and and then valuing these quantities at what we call some base price so i can give you an example of how we can find out uh, base value price and looking at volume only to find out the real value let's say an economy is looking at a situation where in a, in a year let's say year one they made uh, a quantity of 100 units at a price of two dollars right so the value of the GDP, and we've done this before as well in an earlier vid video, value of the GDP or value of the total output, gross domestic product, total output of this economy will be, let's say, $200, right? Now, for example, the quantity changes from 100 to 120, and the price changes from $2 to $2.5. Now, 
what I'll do is this, that I can find out the value of GDP and the value of GDP could be simply uh, 2.5 times or $300. But if you look at this, this is what we call the nominal GDP. What we need to find out is the real GDP. So for real GDP, basically what I need to do, I need to ignore my prices. I need to ignore this and I need to say this, that what if the prices are constant at $2? That would mean two times 120 or in other words, $240. So while your GDP is going up from 200 to 240, it is basically happening because of the change in output. Whatever that made the prices go up, we will ignore that because the rise in prices are kind of uh, misrepresenting the rise in the value of a country's GDP. So the role of inflation or knowing inflation is simply one of changing all of these normal measurement into real measurement. And people want to find out real measurement from many things, from their salaries, from their you know interest payment, rent payment, any income that you get you every year is affected by inflation. And you want to know how much of your income going up is because of inflation and how much is it going up because of some uh, underlying change in the quality or the you know like the value that you you place so a good example could be like uh, if an employer gives you let's say a raise of salary or a raise of wage of 10 percent okay but let's say inflation in the country is five percent then i can say that this is my nominal wage increase Okay, nominal change in wage, uh, this triangle means change, while inflation is 5%. So my real change in wage is going to be 5%. And it's going to be 5%. Why? Because I'll subtract inflation from this. So we can find out our real by subtracting the inflation rate. So the usefulness of inflation rate is that it can convert any nominal measure into real measure. And that's why the finding inflation is an important uh, goal for any sort of uh, government because then we can convert our nominal measurement, be it wages, be it, be it interest, be it any income into real to find out what is the actual rise in our purchasing power or real income. So now let's look into the idea of measuring inflation. So how do we measure inflation? Well, uh, we know this from our discussion earlier that knowing the price level or general price level is an important goal for the government because it is telling us the cost of living. Why do I call it cost of living? Well, simply the idea goes this that if let's say I'm buying five items for $5 per item, this means I'm spending $25. But let's say now next day because of inflation, those five items are now for $10 which means my cost of living will be $50 which means that that cost of living has doubled now so knowing your general price level is important because that can help us figure out the cost of living and how do we look at our general price level well the changes in the general price level on an annual basis or on a year-to-year -year basis is simply what we call inflation or rate of inflation in economy how do we figure our rate of inflation well typically we make what we call a price index which is simply a cumulative way of looking at prices so for a general price level one procedure is that we create a basket of commodities that reflect the spending pattern of a representative household so let's say i look from my whole population of an economy a representative household uh, something that can represent the population by and large and i then look at their consumption to look at the typical consumption that they do on goods and services which means i am creating a basket of commodities and from that basket of commodities i would like to know how the prices were in a particular base year which means the beginning from which i'm starting my calculation of uh, inflation and then in subsequent years we look at how the prices are changing so this is one way of finding inflation where the cost in the base year is set to 100 and in the subsequent year what we do is that we look at how the index is behaving relative to the base date 
and and therefore that can help us figure out inflation on a year to year level now this can be well understood through a simple example so let's look at an example of how we can calculate inflation let's say we have a household which is spending on three items which is food fuel and housing so we can see they that they have a basket which is made up of these three items now in reality the basket will have many items but this is a very simplistic way of looking at how to calculate inflation right so so this uh, household has food fuel and housing as the three items they spend on and the base year price or the price from which we are calculating inflation is $2 for food $3 for uh, fuel and $5 for housing now because these three goods have a different price you know two three and five the best way to say is that in my base here i will represent all of these at the same level call them 100 okay so index has a role where i'm actually uh, sort of scaling all of these three different sort of uh, goods at a price of so this way, uh, I don't need to worry about something is more expensive than the other because base here, they all start at 100. But uh, next year, for example, if this goes up from 2 to 2.5 and 3 to 3.25 and 5 to 5.5, we will be able to adjust it accordingly. Now, the another problem that we can see in this basket is this idea that I'm not really spending equal amount of money for all these three items. I might be spending more on food. In fact, I am. In fact, 60% of my income is going on food, while 30% is going on fuel and 10% is going on housing. This makes, makes up 100%. So weight is simply what we call our the proportion of income spent. And therefore, if food is more important, so I've given it more weight, like 60% and then fuel is the next most important thing and lastly is housing. So we will now look at something called weighted average. So let's look at how do we end up calculating inflation in this simple example. The first thing we'll do is that we will find out the percentage change in price of each item. So as you can see that food is going up from 2.5 to uh, from 2 to 2.5 which means for food if I find percentage change, which is going to be new minus old or 2.5 minus 2 over 2 times 100 or 25%, right? And similarly for fuel, if I do the working, which is going to be 3.25 minus 3 over 3, I will find out to it to be 8.3%. You can do the working on your own as well. And then housing, you can see is going up from 5 to 5.5, which means 5.5 minus 5 over 5 times 100, I'm looking at this to be 10%. Once I've found out my uh, percentage change in prices, I will then find out what we call a weighted average. Now, why do we need weighted average? It's simply because we need to figure out that since these items uh, are uh, of different sort of importance to the consumer or the, ho or the household, we can't treat them equally. For example, if uh, food is going up by 25% and it's also 60% of the total expenditure, it should have a larger impact when it comes to inflation. So in the second stage or step, we are trying to look at basically our weighted average. So food, as we said, is increasing by 25%, right? But 25% is the, the what you call your um, percentage increase but i'm going to multiply it by 0.6 which is the weight or 60 uh, percent because it's not the whole 100 percent that is going up by uh, uh, from 2 to 2.5 it's 60 percent is of of uh, the total that is going up from 2 to 2.5 so although the weight is although the food item is increasing by 25 percent but since the consumer is only spending 60% of its income, the impact of this will be on your inflation or average price level will be 15%. Similarly, for fuel, we know this, that although it's increasing by 8.3%, but the weight assigned to it is basically 0.3, which would mean it's going to be 2.49%. Right. So I am adjusting each of these items. Similarly, for housing, I'm adjusting them each 
according to the percentage of income spent or proportion of income spent uh, by each household. So when I do that, I'll get myself 1%. So although food is increasing by 25%, but if you adjust it for its weight, it's increasing by 15%. Now, if I find out the total of this, which is my third step, is to look at the rate of inflation. Now, for the rate of inflation, all I need to do is simply look at the index value in the first year uh, and therefore can find out the rate of inflation. So if I look at the, if I add all of these three values, my sum is equal to 18.49%. So therefore, I can say my rate of inflation is going to be 18.49%. Now, from an index perspective, my index in the base year was 100, but next year my index will be with the, the year one where I'm looking at inflation. So year one index will be simply 100 plus 18.49 or 118.49. So the idea goes this, that when you're looking at inflation, we're looking at the value of uh, all of these goods, right? And the index is actually very useful because index tells us that overall, if the prices were at 100, they've gone up by 18.49%, which means the index has gone to 118.49. Now, if for example, so right now we said that, you know, like your base year or year zero, it was 100. Uh, you know, your year one, we said it's 118.49 uh, uh, and let's say they give you another information that they say in the second year, let's say it turns out to be, you know, 120. So you can see this, that the rate of inflation was 18.49 percent as as i found it out but what about next day when the index went to 120 clearly prices are going up why because from 118.49 is gone to 120 so prices are going up as compared to base here it's gone up by 20 percent but as what's the rate of inflation if somebody asks you you will always find rate of inflation to be you know new minus old over old times 100 simply percentage change as compared to not the base year, but last year. So I will say 120 minus 118.49 over 118.49 times 100, which will turn out to be 1.51%. So this way we are using our rate of inflation sort of uh, formula or using our index to find our rate of inflation every year.